Two Wrestling Fans Discussions. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. And we're going to get right into it. This episode is going to cover um, what we call uncrowned champions, guys who should have gotten the belt, uh, the world heavyweight title, that is. But for whatever reason, politics, whatever it is, they didn't get the title, but we feel like they could have had a run. All right, so the first guy up we're going to talk about is uh, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. Rowdy, Piper. Rowdy, Rowdy Piper, legend. Um, guy just had a tremendous career acting and wrestling. and just, Yes, he did. You know, just one of the greatest all the time. You talk about charisma. This guy's charisma was like on a whole other level. He was great on the microphone, which most guys, when they one of the key things you need to be a champion is the, the mic skills. He was excellent on the microphone. He was excellent in the ring, telling a story. Brawler, fighter, wrestler, whatever you needed, that he was it. He could do it all. He could do it yep. all. Um, but when did he when did he come in? That was uh what year? Do you remember what year exactly he came he, in? He well, it was it was obvious. I think it was. I believe it was the end of eighty four. Okay. When he came in because WrestleMania won, he was part of the main event with Hogan. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, before that, the WCW or NWA. Um, but yeah, he was uh, his run was eighty four through eighty seven. He took a brief two year hiatus and came back WrestleMania five and stuck around as a full time wrestler at least until nineteen ninety two. Right. Okay. So in the early 80s, or I guess mid-80s, when he was he was feuding with Hogan, um, when did he feud with Snuka? Was that around, was around the same time, right? That was around the same time, the famous when, Piper's Pit with the when coconut. He hit him, when he hit him legitimately, right? He really hurt him, I think? Yeah, it, it wasn't a prop, unfortunately. The, the, it wasn't pre-cracked. It was nothing. It was actually legit. And Oh, boy. To this day, that's still one of the best Piper uh, pit, Piper's yeah. Pit segments. And Piper's Pit was awesome. That was just, I mean... Definitely. Yeah, that was that was like the precursor for uh, the Brother Love show. Uh, yeah, it, it paved the way for all the ones that we they, they even still do now. The funeral parlor, funeral parlor heartbreak, heartbreak hotel, hotel. Yeah, you know, the barbershop. Was, the barbershop. Yeah, that was that was a, some great moments. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was Piper. He did his thing uh, definitely. But the thing with Piper was he um, during that whole feud with Hogan, it was interesting because he would not lay down for Hogan. No, like he would no. not. He would not. Like Hogan couldn't get him clean. I think he. What did he? He always beat him like what? DQ was count out. DQ would count like out. That, yeah. And if it was a tag match, if Hogan had to get over, it was usually somebody Piper's else. Partner, mm-hmm. Bob Orton, or uh, who else? I don't, who else was he with? Orndorff. Uh, yeah, he he seemed like a bunch of guys. It was a bunch of people, but mainly yeah. Bob Orton was his, was his, was his uh, go-to guy. Yeah, and he um. Him and Hogan, I mean, you talk about two of the charism- most charismatic wrestlers of all time. They had that good chemistry, both charisma, both they both obviously had egos too, you know. And both uh, proven that they were the yeah. icon of the business. Yep, absolutely. You know, and the thing I feel like the thing about uh, Piper is it's the reason why he might not have gotten the title was the fact that he wanted to do his Hollywood thing. Because when you think about it, he left for about he was only gone for like two years, like you said, right? From like yeah. eighty seven to like eighty nine, he was in Hollywood. He filmed They Live. Yeah, I think he might have filmed some other stuff too. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Maybe TV or. But I know Day Live was the big one. That was definitely the big one. So yeah. I, from what I understand, they felt like he had like one foot in and one foot out of the business, and so that 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 could have been a reason. Um, another reason could have been too the fact that you know back then a heel guy wasn't going to get the title for more than uh, two seconds if they got yeah. it at all. Yeah, because if you look at it, Iron Sheik only had it roughly one uh, one month after he beat Backlund. The next month at the Garden, Hogan beats him. Yeah. Uh, if you go even further than that, I mean, Andre the Giant. We'll we'll get it to Ted DiBiase and yeah. him in a second. Um, that's that's gonna be a good one. <laughs> and then you go as far up even as Sergeant Slaughter. For, for a villain yeah. to actually held the title for longer for a long period of time, you got to go all the way to 1993 with Yokozuna. With Yoko, yeah. Where yeah, he absolutely. held from from June until WrestleMania March the following year. So like that's that's pretty much you know the the problem that he ran into uh, in and out of the business doing Hollywood. Um, also the fact that he was a heel, and when he came back as a baby face, you know I just felt like they were never gonna push him as a. I mean they gave him the IC title. We all know about the match that he had with Bret Hart. Um, and to me that was his best year. By far, oh, 1992. Yeah. Oh yeah. Between and and just in the short period of time between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, where he he wins the Intercontinental Title, uh, he takes over. If anybody doesn't know the, the shock story proof, about bro. that, the shocker, yeah, that was classic, bro. That shock that shock proof thing, 
Classic. Yeah. If, if nobody knows the story about this, Bret Hart competed in a house show uh, a couple of days before the Rumble with the fever of 103, lost the title to the Mountie, uh, was supposed to be in the rematch at the Rumble. He obviously couldn't compete, so Roddy Piper took over. He won the Intercontinental title, also was in the Royal Rumble that night. When the, and if everybody remembers, the Rumble was for the vacated WWF championship. Almost came close to winning both belts and then went on to WrestleMania eight to have one of the best matches of his career against Bret the Hitman Hart. Yeah. So, so his career really took off then. You know what I forgot to mention? He had a uh, short, but actually pretty cool feud with Ric Flair in 91 towards the yes, end of 91. He, he was the original feud for when Flair came in. Yeah, yeah. Flair was pushing Hogan's buttons, but Piper was the one because they went on to survive a series and, and had their, their match. And they had, they fought at a few, few house shows. And a couple of Saturday yeah. Night Main events. Do you remember that he actually, well, he won, he beat Ric Flair in a non-title match in a steel mm-hmm. cage. It was a steel cage match at a house show. And uh, I don't know why they made it a non I guess they made it a non-title match because he was going over. But it was when he was the IC champion. Yeah. He fought, well, they, he fought they, Flair. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and, mean, and for anybody and just a, a quick side bit, if anybody ever says why Hogan and Flair never fought WrestleMania eight or never fought period. And that's another that's a whole hour discussion right there. They had a few house shows, too, that probably that some people don't remember either. Right. Yeah. They're so, on the they're on the network now. If anybody wants to watch it, it's on the network. But yeah, they did. So, they, they had their house show run. We're going to get into that mm-hmm. in another, another episode. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> 92, like you said, was was a great year. Um, and then after 92, I mean, that, I guess that was pretty much it for him, right? He uh, he was kind of in and out, he he was out a, for a while. He, yeah, he did a performance at uh, Wembley Stadium, SummerSlam 92 with the bagpipes. And then he was gone until 1994 when he came back in a, I guess, I don't know, like a managerial capacity, I guess you could say. And then, you know, he fought Jerry the King Lawler, which was yeah, all right. That was, that was just like a throwaway. And then, and... and then he had another type thing where he was running. He was the acting president of WWE in 1996. And he fought at WrestleMania 12 against Goldust, the backlot brawl. And then that was pretty much it. And then, he, you know, he went on, moved on to WCW before he came back for one final run in 2003. Right. Yeah. Where, believe it or not, his one and only pay-per-view, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, yeah. So... His, his arch rival. Yeah, so so all in all, with with um with Piper, I don't think it was really too much. It wasn't really politics, like with other guys. I think it was just a matter of the guy had other um other things he wanted to do, like in Hollywood. Um, the fact that heels didn't really get a title run, you know, yeah. especially during the Hogan era. Because that always bugged me. Why is it that your first ever WrestleMania, and I, I was wondering this, instead of the tag team match that they had, why not have Hogan versus Piper for the belt? Or even at WrestleMania 2, I feel that Piper wasn't given a, a proper match because when you had the 10-round boxing match with Mr. T, yeah. why even then he could have fought Hogan in the steel cage instead of King Kong Bundy. I know Hogan had a rivalry going on with the Heenan family. He was feuding with Bundy, mm-hmm. with Rude for a brief time, obviously Andre um, and all of those guys. But those were the two key moments that I believe he could have had his title match and even if a title run, even if it was for a brief moment. Right, that, that was, was that was the time to play. That was him his in. time. That was his time. But because then after that, he you know he fruit when Ravishing Rick was the Intercontinental Champion, he had a short feud with him, and then the whole Bad News Brown fiasco from the Rumble onto WrestleMania six yeah. that never escalated after that. You know, mainly because Bad News had had left the company at that point. Right, right, right. And then he goes to commentating. For a little while, then they have the storyline where Virgil is leaving the million dollar man and Roddy Piper's helping him. And he helped him get to the million dollar championship. By that point, he was out with his surgery. Right, yeah. Because he had his first hip surgery. Yeah, I love it. And then he came, that's when he came back to the ring midway through 91 with Ric Flair. Yeah. All right. So that, that leads us into uh, number two on our list, mm-hmm. which is the one and only Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. Um, Maybe I mean he's up there as one of the greatest heel gimmicks of all time. I mean, oh by far, definitely. When you talk about a a, a heel and, and and just a gimmick that was just um was so over, you know. And um, from what I understand, that was basically um, based on Vince McMahon. That whole 
that whole million dollar man he's got money he can just buy anything he wants and from what i understand yeah um it was actually based on vince and i i don't know if this is true um let me know if you heard this that gimmick was originally going to be for rick flair at that time when they were they were trying to get rick flair over to um WWF, I, I I remember I, 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 something briefly bring, uh, brings to uh, attention that at the time they were negotiating with him the possibility right. that he could. They were walk. trying to bring him in. Yeah, but I think it honestly worked out better for the DBRC. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I don't know if you remember the vignettes they used to do uh, when he used to walk into a store and uh, oh you know, yeah, it's how him he had Virgil with him and. Um, you know what I, I um I actually I heard a podcast with uh, Bruce Pritchard and he said that um in the beginning people actually liked the million dollar man and they had to figure out a way like how to get heat on him. So that's when they had him like offering people money to do something and then he never paid them. Down, down to basketball 15 you remember times that? you get a hundred dollar bill right, right, and right. fourteen times he'd kick it away from he kick it away, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. that's how they started to um to build the heat on him. And the guy being not only that, he could handle his handle himself in the ring too. He was a great wrestler, very good oh, worker. Yeah. Um, like I said, charisma off the charts. He, doing... he had a slow start though when yeah. he came in in '79. Matter of fact, if uh, nobody knows this, Hulk Hogan's first house show match when he got to the WWE was Ted DiBiase. And of That's course, right. At the time DiBiase was a, was a fan favorite. That's correct. Um, he he had a slow start for the first few years, bouncing back and forth, and then he finally came into his own around. I would say end of 86, beginning of 87 is when they started the gimmick. And it took off. You know, he had his first, uh, the the first real storyline with the heel gimmick they gave was with Bobby Heenan and Hercules, how Hercules was being sold to him for his bidding. And he didn't, he didn't go over with that. And that was it. That's how they got Hercules to be a fan favorite. Right, right. They made a baby face. And then they, uh, from there, you know, he hooked up with Andre and the whole, you know, after WrestleMania three, and we all know the story of Saturday Night's main event. You know, in February 1988, Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan. Well, we got to referees, right? But we we got to we and we, we can do a whole show on that at some point. We got to go back oh, a yeah. little bit because, from what I understand, and and this is straight from Ted DiBiase, whether he's lying or not, nobody knows. But apparently, he was supposed to get the world title at WrestleMania four. Um, but what happened was Honky Tonk Man refused to drop the IC title to Macho Man. Macho Man was supposed to get the IC title. Honky Tonk Man was supposed to do it on a Saturday night's main event, I believe. Maybe like a month or two prior. I forget. Yeah, because they were having the when, when when Savage first turned uh, uh, he um babyface. Right. He that that was his first feud was exactly. with Jimmy Hart and the Honky Tonk Man. Exactly. And the Hart Foundation. And because he refused to drop the belt to Macho Man. They pivoted and they said, okay, well, we'll make Macho Man the world heavyweight champion. And eventually we'll give it to DiBiase. But instead they ended up doing the million dollar belt, which was great in itself. But apparently that's, he doesn't, he, he still has heat with, um, with Honky Tonk to this day because of that. <clears throat> I, I mean, I don't understand why Honky didn't want to drop it. I guess you could say no. that they, 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 at that point, then I guess they punished him at SummerSlam 88 by giving him a 90 second match. Yeah, I guess the Ultimate Warrior yeah. when Brutus Beefcake was was injured, yeah. he was supposed to have that match. But, it, but it, it, yeah, I, I don't understand why he wouldn't work with them because they they were good in the ring and yeah. it, it benefited Savage anyway because yeah. you know that made him world champion. But honestly, I would have I would have liked to see DiBiase as the champion at least going into WrestleMania four to where Savage. Oh faced man, him. that I mean it would I mean think about this I mean you could have had Hogan versus DiBiase you could have had. You still could have had that match. I don't understand. I mean, even even if you go with the Andre thing, right? Because from what I understand, Vince was adamant about having an Andre and Hogan rematch because it does it did such great business that he yeah. was adamant, adamant, adamant. And it was smart mm-hmm. because if you look at that, that that was the first main event because the main event was a spinoff of Saturday night's main event. Main event was on Friday nights. That was the spinoff. Mm-hmm. It's I think it still holds the record, I think, for um most ratings in a primetime uh show. I think I, I think I, it, I know I was up late that night. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I I was so angry with the referees. I couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, it was a it was a great angle. Um, yeah. but you still could have instead of stripping um, instead of stripping him, you could have had Andre. Yeah, Andre sold him the belt, right? He sold him the belt, and then you still could have had Hogan 
versus DiBiase at WrestleMania and Hogan trying to get his belt back that way. Still could have done it, you know? So I, I, I don't know why you made the pivot because we're going to do a WrestleMania 4 review, which I love WrestleMania 4. A lot of people don't like it, and I understand why they don't like it. For me, it's very nostalgic because it's the first WrestleMania that I actually saw live. Like mm-hmm. 1, 2, and 3 I saw on VHS. Yeah. WrestleMania 4, actually, I, I don't know if you remember Closed Circuit TV. Yeah. They used to have back in the day. I saw mm-hmm. it on Closed Circuit TV because it wasn't on cable. I saw it in Closed Circuit TV in a gymnasium. I forget what gymnasium. In, somewhere in Brooklyn, it was uh, some high school. On the big screen, Closed Circuit TV, and I saw it live. Oh, yeah. and so I'm, it's very nostalgic for me. It might not be a great – and I love it. For some reason, I'm, I, I'm a mark for uh, tournaments. I love oh, I lo- tournaments. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I, I think the whole tournament setup was great. Yeah. I, I think uh, even the, the uh, title matches themselves were great. You know, you had Strike Force versus Demolition, um, which on paper looks one sided, but they actually held their own against Axe and Smash, who, you know, just happened to be my favorite tag team. Um, then you had Ultimate Warrior versus Hercules, a grudge match. Awesome. Bruce, Brutus Beefcake, Honky Tonk Man did an excellent thing. And like I said, the tournament itself. And you had the one guy that wins it for all four matches where in other cases there were some buys. Right, right, which was which was awesome. And we, like I said, we'll, we'll go over that in great detail. We'll go into the uh, another yeah. review. But, you know, no, DiBiase... I actually loved WrestleMania yeah. 4. That was awesome. But DiBiase, you know, makes it to the finals versus Macho Man. You know, mm-hmm. it was a good match and everything, you know. But, you know, of course, Hogan, you know, had to steal Macho Man Shine. That's a, that's a story for uh That's the another... only issue with that pay-per-view is that... I think, and I, and I think they did that mainly because they didn't think Savage could could do it himself. So they had Hogan ride his coattail. I honestly think he could pull, he could have pulled it off. And even like yeah, you were saying, Hogan versus DiBiase WrestleMania four. I think we could have even did the classic double main event to where you have Savage and DiBiase fighting for the title, and you could have still had your Hogan Andre part two. Because remember, they did it, but it wasn't as good because they had to eliminate them both from the tournament so right the right right yeah, it wasn't yeah. as good as wrestlemania 3 yeah no 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 so you know from from and from there on out i mean then he started he gets the million dollar belt which i thought was really cool at the time like it, it did fit his character like this guy's like yes. oh i can't get the belt i'll just make my own because i i have exactly. <clears throat> so it was awesome it looked really cool um I'll defend it when i want to which I'll is defend almost, it, never. Right, almost never yeah you know that that was great um but I, I think he I, only defended it twice, if I'm not against, mistaken. It was no, against Virgil, obviously. Virgil right? won it, and then WrestleMania six, he defended it against Jake the Snake Roberts. Was it up? Yeah, yeah didn't it? Didn't, it was didn't, up, didn't Jake? They did the whole storyline where Big Boss Man was supposed to be hired to get it back because Jake stole it. Right. And that's Jake where they, stole they, it. They did, Jake stole it. Yeah, yeah. he had it in yeah, the back with Damien, right? He had yes. them together. Yeah. And they did the whole storyline where they turned Big Boss Man babyface on that, and um, right, right. If everybody remembers WrestleMania six. Big boss man's match. DiBiase was at ringside. He attacked him. But yeah, he only, the, the only two times I believe he ever defended it until he brought it back with Steve Austin later on. Is, yeah, was WrestleMania six and yeah. Virgil, which him against Virgil for that belt. You know, they they had a good rivalry. You know, a lot of people didn't give oh, Virgil did. credit. Oh, but I think he was a tremendous athlete. The only thing I think he was jinxed was was okay. We need a veteran to bring in somebody like Yokozuna. Oh, hey, Virgil, come on in. You know, go ahead and yeah, and they fight fed him. Man. They fed him. Yeah. yeah, but Virgil's best run was in 1991 when he won that belt. Yeah, and even when he lost it, he's you know he still he had good chemistry. In the he fight. was ser- he was serviceable. He wasn't. It bad. was one. It, it was one of those belts that it was number one. It was non-sanctioned. You know, they, they don't recognize it, so he can defend it whenever he wants. Yeah, it was. I, just, I, I can hold this forever. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. just cool, man. And you're right. It fit his persona. Because it fit that his was persona. Like, yeah. That was like the missing puzzle to his. Outfit. Yeah. His but character. yeah absolutely but and him you know much like piper in a way is also a victim of they weren't going to really give a heel a title yeah. push during that time you know it was just um although if anybody was worthy of it i mean he certainly was i mean the guy was over oh as God. hell and he was such he was such a good heel you know he, even even if you don't if you don't do it in, in the in the <clears throat> night in 1988 he was still a top heel and a top he still mattered even in 1989 1990 right 1991 i mean he was still relevant he was still, still relevant, yeah. and then they they moved him to the tag team division yeah and then... which was wasn't bad i mean oh, him it was and, him it was and irs were, you know you just 
these two guys just happened to get together and poof, I remember watching Superstars one day and they said that Money Incorporated beat Legion of Doom for the tag titles. And I'm like, yeah, how? what? You're like, what? How, how did this happen? How, how did that happen? Yeah. Show, that, show that was... me show me that video, you right, know? Right. And, you know, he, he he finished his career on a, on a high note with, with Money Incorporated and then, you know, helping Razor Ramon. Yeah, and know, the guy... His, his final match was SummerSlam 1993. His health so he, was already... He was having yeah. injuries. That's I think that's why mm-hmm. they shifted him into tag team matches because he was yeah. already starting to get banged up and it helped to have a partner. That way he didn't do have to do as much, you know? So it was really a combination of things, timing, you know, and, uh, you know, the injuries later on. Because, I mean, even look at it. During 1999, he's still feuding with Hulk Hogan, who's the World Wrestling Federation champion. He Even when the Ultimate Warrior was the champion, he was still That's right. They, um, fighting they, him. They did a Saturday night's main event you know, after yeah, the yeah. Survivor Series. Yes. Right, 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 right. That's correct, yeah. So he was he was still getting those, still, those title still, matches, yeah. yeah. And he he's another one that had some great feuds. Uh, again, besides Savage and Hogan, Jake the Snake Roberts went over yeah, yeah. really well. Uh, Virgil, um, he introduced the Undertaker at Survivor Series. Well, how about how about Dusty Rhodes? Yes, his he had feud, a good with, feud Dusty with Dusty Rhodes. Yes. Yeah, uh, definitely. I forgot. I, I'm glad you mentioned Survivor Series. I mean, when he brought up the the mystery partner on the Tickers debut. Yes. That was awesome. That if was you ask, if you ask any kid, hey, what do you remember DiBiase for? They might say, oh, the Undertaker's debut. He brought him in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then uh, Royal Rumble '91, uh, him and Dusty fought. It was the uh, that's when Virgil turned on DiBiase. Mm-hmm. It was Dusty and Dustin Rhodes, aka Goldust. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made his one and only appearance back then, because by that point he was just about to start, I believe, in WCW. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, so oh. DBS, he's always had good feuds, even in that, even the tag team division. You know, natural disasters. Yeah, absolutely. Legion of Doom, Steiner Brothers. I mean, anybody you put him in the ring with, you got quality. You got a quality yeah. match. No doubt, one of the all-time greats. Definitely. All right, so let's move on to number three, and that would be Ravishing Rick Rude. I mean, you talk about another great heel. I mean, the '80s had great heels, man. He was say. the Val Venus, I guess you could say, of the 80s because yeah, it was but that better, sort of persona, but better. Yes, definitely. Oh, by 10 yeah. times better. Yeah. Definitely. He he was great on the microphone. He had he had the one thing that was needed back then. He had the manager. He 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 had the ability in the ring. His best feud to this day in WWE was the Ultimate Warrior. Oh yeah. Both feuds. But unfortunately, the one guy who was the top guy at the time wouldn't work with him. Hogan. Had one match against had one match against him. It was the, we talked about this. He had the, the house show at the Boston Garden, mm-hmm. January eighty eight, the month before Andre, and you know, Hogan defended the title against Ravish Rick Rude. And from what I remember, it was a great match. It was a one two three pinfall, and but that was it until his farewell match at SummerSlam ninety against the Warrior for the title. But I always think he could have been a guy to carry the WWE title, even if again for a short time. No question. He was so. If you think about it, imagine if they had the monthly pay per views back then. That's that's another thing. Yeah. Could have done. Yep. Yep. Instead of the every few months, how much more they could have gotten in with these guys than than just the short time that you saw them on pay per view? Because unless you you you, unless you saw the house shows, because sometimes in at least back in New York, I don't know if you remember. They used to air the Madison Square Garden house shows on, on MSG. Network. On MSG, yeah, they used to have them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. So, I mean, they unless you watched them all the time, unless you know, you really didn't see them a whole lot. Yeah, and, and I think on uh, was it primetime wrestling? I think they used to give some of the house show clips right there too, right? Then they um, yeah, besides doing their own matches, right, 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 yeah. You know, primetime was well, to me paved the way for Monday Night Raw. Oh yeah, 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 because it worked out great. You know, they they had some good stuff on there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you look at um, I love this feud with um, with Jake the Snake. His his yeah, feud with Jake the Snake. Twenty four. Oh yeah. yeah. With putting Cheryl Roberts on. Cheryl Roberts. That was, I mean, that was awesome, man. That was awesome. If you if you want to get under a guy's skin, just, there you go. Yeah. I knew how to do it. He certainly did. He used to do all the stuff. All you sweat hogs, out here, and he's maybe say cut the music, cut the music. Yeah. The this winner guy, of the Jesse the Body Award. Yep, this guy knew how to. He knew how to get heat, man. This guy was awesome. Oh yeah, he was a great, um, great wrestler. Um, 
you know, his feud with his first feud with the Warrior, you know, was uh, started with the pose down. Yeah, what well, that was terrible though. We got it. Admit, was, we got to admit it was bad, bro. It was bad. It, it was because you knew what the outcome was going to be because we've seen this a dozen times over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I mean that was that to me I think was the introduction to these two are going to fight and they're going to fight at WrestleMania five. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, I mean, now, yeah, the I mean, outcome. The, the they had a great well, match until the outcome to me. I mean, Bobby Heenan holding Warrior's foot down. I mean, I, I honestly think Rude could have gotten a clean victory on him. Yeah, but the the warrior was built built up in a way the same way Hogan was. No one was ever gonna win clean over him at that point, you know. So yeah, they, just, they still they still do that to this day, and I always think it, it presents a problem because you when know, you finally do beat them, now it's like, okay, what are you gonna do with them? Yeah, that's true. You know what I didn't understand? Do you remember? I forgot when it was, man. It was before WrestleMania that Brutus the Barber Beefcake beat Ravishing Rick Rude. I don't know mm-hmm. if it was a main event. I don't know what it was. I think it was. Right? Was it main event? I feel like it was main event. He beat him. And I'm like, why the hell is Brutus the Barber Beefcake going over on Rude? And then... Because I believe at the time, he was tr- he was still trying to be relevant for the Intercontinental Championship. Well... Was, you know, because you, if you haven't noticed, Brutus was completely jinxed in the ring. Well, the year before... The title. The year, what was it, 89? He was supposed to win the uh, IC title versus... 88 versus, and 90. Versus Honky Tonk. SummerSlam 88, they were supposed to fight. He got injured. They substituted him with the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. And then in 1990, SummerSlam, it was supposed to be Mr. Perfect defending the Intercontinental title against Beefcake. Remember, Beefcake gave him technically his first loss at WrestleMania. Yeah, that was ridiculous. He should. He, Beefcake had no business uh, beating Mr. Perfect. I'm sorry. Exactly. Was no, no business. He, get, he gets into the boating accident where his career is pretty much over. He had the, the screws and everything. Put that in was in 90, face. yeah. And then the Texas Tornado came in, and he won the Intercontinental title. And I believe – I know the storyline for 88 was Beefcake was supposed to go over as the Intercontinental champion. As far as 1990 goes, I don't think Perfect was supposed to drop it to Beefcake. But when the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich, came in, they they seized the opportunity to give him the title and let him have a run with it, which to me I think should have been longer. Yeah. So, I mean, that's – I mean, we'll get into Perfect in in a while. Perfect is up next, yeah. But, yeah. But um yeah so you had that was great when they fought at WrestleMania Bobby Heenan cheating Bobby Heenan in the corner you know that was that that was great then of course you know Warrior eventually he gets his get back of course you well, know at SummerSlam '89 yeah, they, they so. fight each other in the rematch and and to me it always looked like Warrior was Ravishing Rick Rude was one of the guys that could really sell a move oh yeah yeah. <laughs> He Never notice. Oh, when they throw him into the turnbuckle, yeah, yeah. and you think his discs were were laying there on the floor, and then when he tried to do his his ravishing move, and he's holding his back, the man really knew how to sell a beating from the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, he made Warrior look great. Yes, he did. He made Warrior look great, and I mean, apparently, he actually, actually, I think they both made. I thought they each other. They made each other look. Yeah, good. yeah. I know what you're saying. I mean, they had good chemistry. They definitely, mm-hmm. they definitely two guys that had good chemistry. Um, apparently, uh, Root had some heat with him though because um, he never. Well, who thanked didn't back then? At the, you know, same time, he never, he never thanked them for um, for helping for Root helping him in the ring, making him look good. And mm-hmm. apparently, there's a story where he, after a match with Andre, he would buy Andre a bottle of wine. Um, Warrior would. But he would never even say thank you to Rude. So Rude got pissed, and I think Rude well, choked him out, right? Didn't Rude st- choke him out yeah. backstage? So well, considering also what Wario did to Wario tormented Andre in the ring. I mean, everybody knows the story where Andre was telling him, and I think it was a match in '89, was for the Intercontinental Title. Right. Andre's telling him in the ring, "Slow down, slow down." And when he when he wouldn't, he had put his uh, fist up and, and right. punched him. Yeah, and he ran into his fist. I mean, yeah. and Andre was the type of guy that. He commanded respect. He, I don't care if it was Barry Horowitz in the ring with him. Barry Horowitz would give him respect. He was one of those guys that even if the title wasn't put on him, he was the top guy. No yeah. matter who, who's holding the belt, Andre was the man. And, yeah. of course, every, everybody's going to show him respect. So he's, he's also perfect. scared. I mean, not only not telling him respect, I'm sure he was scared of him, too. So he probably wanted to get on his. Well, on if his you were set. in the ring with with Andre, would you? Would yeah. you be scared too? Well, I wouldn't even want to get in the ring with him. But <laughs> I mean, you're talking about 525 yeah. pounds, and, and that the, the, the look on his face when he would choke you out was enough to scare any yeah. girl. No, absolutely. He was really, he was really good. But uh, you're getting back to Rude, though. So you know, Rude has that feud. Um, 
with Warrior. Uh, what does what does he do? What does he do after that? Uh, I know the Survivor Series. He had his team. It was his team versus the Warriors team, right? At Survivor Series, uh, nineteen eighty nine. I I believe so. I think he had his own team. Versus, the, I I know there was a lot of problems at Survivor Series eighty nine because you remember that's shortly before that they you know Heenan thought he had his uh, whole team together. Right, right. Uh, the Heenan, the Heenan actually, family. no, no. It was unless Rude, if the Rude was a captain, he didn't he didn't face Warrior because Warriors uh, team went up against Andre. Right, that's right. And it was supposed the Brainbusters was supposed to be on one of those teams, and Tully Blanchard was fired two days prior for substance abuse or whatever happened. Yeah, Tully whatever Blanchard happened. was fired. That, that Bobby Heenan had to take over, and then shortly after, Arn Anderson left anyway. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, it was Andre and Warriors team. Um, War, um, Rude fought Piper's team. Mm, okay. Because by then, Rude believed that Piper cost him the Intercontinental title. Right. That's when he had his feud, a short feud with Piper. Yeah. Piper came down the ring, lifted his kilt. Right, Rude was yeah, shocked, yeah, yeah. And, and, Warrior, and the rest is history. Warrior became a two-time Intercontinental champion. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Because and- Survivor Series 89, to me, is one of those like lost ones. Like You don't really hear about it. It's not on the radar. Like it's, it's man, Again, going back to DiBiase, like we talked to him before, he, his team was against Hogan's team. So, and then, you know. Mega Bucks, yeah. Yeah, Warrior had his with Andre, and then, yeah, Rude's team was with Piper. And they, right, right, right. They, that one, they even split up tag teams, which I didn't agree with. But, yeah, that was kind of weird. I didn't get that. But. but then, for some reason, after that, it's like Rude took a step back because now you go to WrestleMania six and he's put into a match with no hype against Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Yeah, they just threw and and from what I understand, they were trying to rebuild Snooker, but he but wasn't really. He had he had just returned. Right, he had just returned. They were trying to rebuild him, but he wasn't quite the same Snooker. Why they would throw? Rude, why would why would Rude? That didn't make any sense. Rude was already established at his level, and why? And, would, and if you remember back then at WrestleManias or even some pay-per-views they would just they would known for that they would throw matches together yeah. one example the card was, yeah one example of wrestlemania 6 was the model rick martell versus coco beware there was no hype leading up to it no animosity right. hercules and earthquake same thing so even though that match was pretty good so but putting rude against snooker to me was i put I, I thought even though snooker was a future hall of fame it was a step down for him because he was he was in the spotlight for the title at least right. if anything they're kind of and now he's coming backwards. Going backwards, yeah. And that led up to SummerSlam. He faces Warrior for the for the title in the cage. Right, and 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 the thing about that is, um, Rude had kind of gone away for a little while. He took a little a little little break between um between that. Um, but yeah. apparently he was training really 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 hard. That's why if you see his, he was always in great shape. But he looked probably his best, uh, in 1990. Yeah, cut his hair he short. Cut his hair, yeah. Cut his hair short. Uh, he looked in tremendous, tremendous shape, and he trained. And I love those vignettes um, of him training, like Rocky Balboa. They show yeah. him running on the beach, and they show him boxing, and and uh, basically Heenan is playing like Mickey. Yeah, you know. And then and remember the, the the promo that he cut at uh, SummerSlam because SummerSlam was in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and he cut that promo, and he was talking about Rocky Balboa. This is where Rocky fought Apollo Creed. He- and he was even, they even did a vignette to where he was at the uh, on the stairs. Yes, yes, yes. He was saying, "I'm the only man to ever pin you." You know, mm-hmm. so it, it had it had such a great, great build up, man. I've never really been a a big fan of steel cage matches. I don't know how you feel, um, but I thought that was one of the better ones. I thought. I mean the 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 uh, the blue steel cage. I wasn't a fan of it as opposed to the one now. Right, right, right. I mean, that's how, that's pretty much how, how back then, especially they 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 took care of grudge matches. You know, this was the final thing. Unlike now, where you could throw them in a hell in a cell, and all this other stuff. Uh, but you know, I the two of them fighting their third time, they each got to win a piece against each other. Why right. not in the cage? And right. I believe at one point they were talking about Rude possibly getting the belt. When when they were when they were writing the script for SummerSlam '90, I believe I remember hearing that it's possible that he would get over. Go over. But then, but then Hogan had said something, and then they switched it to Warrior, and that's when Rude, when his contract was was up in October, that was it for him. And yeah, I really I really believe even at that point you could have put the title on him, 
and ha- and then Hope Warrior and Root that even had a rematch at Royal Rumble '91 to where Warrior gets the belt back, and then that would lead into WrestleMania Seven, which I believe, and we'll get into that later on in another episode, that that main event should have been Warrior and Savage. Yeah, so, I mean, th- 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 there was a different step to it, but you know, our famous, you know, the whole thing, and I don't know if it's true or not, and there's, there's no telling if he had a, a hand in it or not or if he ever was going to win the title and it was just supposed to be Warrior getting over on him. But by that point, he leaves, goes to WCW, becomes the world champion, had his, had his success there. Yeah. Like we, like we talked about in the last episode when, with Iron Man matches, he had the 30-minute Iron Man match with Ricky Steamboat. He had uh, great matches with, against Sting, Ric Flair. So, I mean, he had his he had his moments when he left. He, he got what I believe he deserved the WWE. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's just sometimes it's timing with these things, you know. A guy like Rude, you know, if he was there maybe five years later, ten years later, it's a different story, you know. But just the way the business, the mis- the business model was, you know, at that time, he just wasn't ever really going to get it run. And the shame of it in '90, um, apparently he started no showing some dates or something like that. They were fighting over. He was fighting with Vince, not so much over his push. I think it was about money. Yeah. Um, they had a, a big, big um big falling out or whatever and then he went into wcw and and did his best work and unfortunately for him we know he was also injury prone too yeah but you know 94 94 (laughs) was the fallout for him yeah when that that uh with sting and everything when he took that bad bump i think i don't know if they were in japan i forgot where they were might have been japan he took a bad bump um over there and you know that was the end of his wrestling career and in the ring at least you know well well between that and and we'll get into this again later on. Um, when Hulk Hogan arrived in WCW 1994, he had said he only wanted one title. And at that point, if you remember, they had the International international that's, that's Championship, right, yeah. which Ravish and Rick Root held, and they had the WCW Championship, which they had created when Flair mm-hmm. jumped ship with it. So now Hogan comes in and says he wants one title. So what happens? Sting beats Root for it because he will not work with them. Flair's got the other one. The two of them fight. Flair keeps the unified title, and we go on from there. Right. So between that ruining Rude's run and on top of his injury, I mean that was just unfortunate for him. Yeah. yeah. And then he and then he you know he could make some some spots. You know he was uh he was in ECW for a time as a manager. Never really wrestled. Uh, he came back in DX for whatever reason. I don't even understand that, but it worked. And then, of course, you know, his last famous thing was the two nights on Raw and Nitro. Right, yeah. That's his, uh... Which is a shame because I, I feel like a lot of people remember Root for that. And there was Unfortunately, so much more... yes. Yeah, but there was so much more to his career than just him being on Nitro and Raw at the same night. But a lot of people seem to... There was a lot of great great matches. Steamboat, yeah. Sting, Warrior, uh, Piper. I mean, he had he had great matches, and but yeah, unfortunately, everybody goes, Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the guy that was on Raw and Nitro the same night. You know, oh, that's, what a difference a day makes! Yeah, yeah, great line though, but yeah, that's, that's oh, funny. definitely, you know. But, um, a guy around his same was there at the same time, you know, was Mr. Perfect, the last guy we're going to cover on this episode. Um, interestingly enough, both of them from Minnesota, they were good friends. Yeah. Um, look, look at the talent that came out of that that area in Minnesota. You talk about the Road Warriors, yes, perfect, um, rude, rude. Lesnar. I mean, it, it's crazy how much talent, um, yeah, came out of that 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 place. But uh, perfect is a guy that came along in a lot of ways at the also the wrong time too, you yeah. know. Um, coming up, uh, but he he got a push right out of the gate, you know. Um, think about the fact that you know we spoke about this before that he he fought Owen Hart the blue blazer at wrestlemania but, still Owen Hart, yeah. but it was and Owen it was, Hart, and yeah. it was a it was a pretty good match for two rookies yeah i mean that, yeah you could that tell nobody that. really knew because i mean right. the crowd was like who are these guys <clears throat> by the end of the night they knew who they were yeah um and uh you know perfect gets his his his, his um they, they do his vignettes you know mr perfect vignettes were awesome that he could just do everything perfect uh great, great another another great heel like i said the 80s man tremendous heels you know? It wasn't even long after he fought uh, Owen Hart that he started the rivalry at the end of 89 with Hulk Hogan. That's right. They were grooming him for a rivalry with Hulk Hogan. Remember, he stole the belt. He, yeah, he, he, he destroyed the belt. He smashed it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mankind has it or had it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so they, they were grooming him and without even getting an IC title yet. 
It's a main yeah, event. And, I look, and look how many times he beat him, whether it be by count out or disqualification. Between him and the genius, I mean, it was yeah. just amazing how many times Hogan was getting a loss to him to them. Yeah. And what, I, what and I thought, go? okay, it's, no. Not clean. Unfortunately, not clean. because even even okay, they originally the original plan for Mr. Perfect was to win the 1990 Royal Rumble. And back then they didn't give the title shot to the Rumble winner. Either two things you could have did with Mr. Perfect. You could have one given him the Rumble and eventually put him in line for a championship match mm-hmm. if Hogan and Warrior is where your direction was for Sky Dome. Or two, Hogan and Perfect fight for the title at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, and see how and see how it goes from there. See if he could be in that type of match, or again, would Hogan allow it? And I remember the at the thing. last minute when they won, when Perfect was supposed to win the Rumble, what happens? Hulk Hogan wins the Rumble, which to me back then I don't even think to me the WWE champion shouldn't have even been in it. Yeah, I always thought the same thing. Why is he, why is the he in it? Guy. Yeah, yeah. T- the top guy shouldn't. Have, but I understand the. Him, just for promotional purposes, you want to have the champion or, or Hulk Hogan, I should say, in the Royal Rumble match because it's the main event. So I guess Hogan had to be in the main event. I mean, you could have yeah. given Hogan. A, I don't know. I guess that was. I, I can understand him winning the the 1991 Rumble, which technically you could say that was the start of the winner getting a title shot. Right, right. Everybody knows he went to WrestleMania seven to face Slaughter. Yeah. But I mean, I can understand. I could justify him winning the '91 Rumble. I just didn't understand the 1990 because you had he had a couple of wrestlers that to me were hotter than him. Ultimate Warrior comes to mind. To me, he was hotter than Hogan going into that. Mr. Perfect. Several guys could have easily won that, and well, I they, think the original well, choice with Perfect was was that. Yeah, because been. I mean, because you you still had. You still had the ability to, to set up WrestleMania because they did it. They set up WrestleMania when Hogan and Warrior were in the ring together, yeah. and they went at it, and the, the crowd went crazy in Orlando. Yeah, you oh, just yeah. you could have still had Hogan lose the Royal Rumble. It didn't matter, but I guess Hogan had to go over, you know. So, I mean, it was weird how they built him up for Hogan, and then from what I understand, Bruce Pritchard apparently said that uh, those house shows where Hogan was facing um, Perfect, yeah, they weren't doing b- good business, and they felt like, well. Hogan can't be the problem because Hogan has always been a draw, which in 1990, I felt like Hulkamania was starting to on the dollar. Decline. It was declining. So they basically, apparently they blamed it on him. They blamed it on perfect, not drawing in those main events with Hogan. Well, look at the, where they started the feud. They started on a house show when you really can't get much buildup on those. You know, the, it, it, the, the, how the buildup should have started on a main event, Saturday night main event, or even at a pay-per-view. On superstars, especially, would have been the perfect place to start it because there were more viewers there. Yeah, you start it there, and it's not going to click. Well, that's the problem. And actually, if you know Hogan could do no wrong because he's the champion, yeah. so it's obviously got to be the challenger. Yeah, you know. So they still they still had confidence in him because he beat Tito Santana in the in IC tournament, tournament yeah. after Warrior relinquished the IC title after beating Hogan for the world title. So um, now, which, he, which, which to me, I don't think he should have went to WrestleMania with it. I think. They should have did something like a superstars or something to where he he lost the title. But I mean, they the title wanted title was still they, the title. The whole I, idea of title for title, I like. It was something different. It was could, something you see, could you see Hogan raising the Intercontinental Championship? No, he had won. No, and that was kind of the giveaway. That was kind of the giveaway yeah. that uh, Hogan Hogan was going to lose. Yeah, but but yeah, you know, they, they still had confidence in him. You know, and he still had great matches. Um, we spoke about it a little while ago with with. The whole thing with Beefcake, he was supposed to fight Beefcake. I think Beefcake was going to go over, man. I think they I th- were going to. I think he was going to win. It, it yeah. is possible that on SummerSlam '90, because of what happened in '88, um, they 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 all the, the the thing for him was always to put the Intercontinental Title on him, even if it was for a short time. I mean, and he gets hurt, and the Texas Tornado comes in, who is more than qualified to 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 be to hold the title, and I think he did a good job. In the short time they gave it to him. Unfortunately, they just didn't do anything else with him afterwards. But you also got to remember who Beefcake's best friend was. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. So I have no doubt that Hogan was probably pulling some strings. Even though, I mean, to be fair, Beefcake was over. I think he was over as a babyface. So it's not like, you know, the people didn't like him. They liked him. They liked the character. And it's it's not like he had had, uh, garbage matches. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. His career. I mean, WrestleMania 5, he feuded with Teddy DiBiase. 
Mr. Perfect, Honky Tonk Man. I mean, he was always in the mix of it. So, I mean, he was always uh, do a right. championship match. It's just unfortunately, every, you know, he got injured. And, and the one in 1990, obviously, was tragic yeah. with the boat. Yeah. But uh, it, it worked out. I mean, even Perfect, even though Perfect dropped the title at SummerSlam, he managed to get it back. Yeah. And he, you know, he held it until SummerSlam 91, where by that point, injuries were sitting in. Yeah. Uh, the story, So the story goes that apparently nine weeks before, um, before SummerSlam, he hurt his back really bad. Mm-hmm. And there was a question on whether or not he was actually going to be able to make it to SummerSlam. And Vince told him, listen, you know, just get out there for a couple minutes, do a squash match. And he said, no, he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do Bret Hart the favor because he was good friends with Bret and they, he respected his work. They had worked together prior to that in house shows. Yeah. Um, they had gone at it. They had some really good matches. And uh, it's one of the all-time greatest matches uh, in Intercontinental Championship history, SummerSlam history. You know, um, I actually think the King of the Ring match between them was better because Perfect was healthy. So I felt that yes. match was a little better. But this is still, it was a tremendous match. It was a great story between them. Um, you could see Perfect was hurting, you know, through that match. I mean, it, it was almost like a squash match because all of a sudden Bobby Heenan's not at ringside. He got some guy named Coach. I didn't understand. I, I never understood that. I was like, who the hell I is didn't this either. guy? And then Perfect did never looked himself in that match, and which is a shame because it, it was took it took away a little bit. Even though Bret Hart was, was going to win regardless, I think it took away a little bit from his first Intercontinental victory because the, the guy is not a hundred percent. And like you said, their 1993 match was way better. And I just wish they would have even had a few go, you know, past that because you know, even for it, when when Brett was the champion, you know, Mister Perfect would have been a great contender for him. Right, right. You know, unfortunately, after '91, he has to take a break for a while. His back is messed up. He was also in, uh, collecting his insurance policy we'll, to haul the yeah. story with Lloyd's of London. Um, mm-hmm. So he's out here. So he's out for like uh, what was he out for? About a year and a half, was it? Uh, came- August '91 through he he made his return to Survivor Series '92 with teaming with Savage against uh, Ric Flair and Razor because Ultimate Warrior backed out and left. It was supposed to be Warrior and Savage versus Flair and Razor Ramon. Right. And when he left, Savage decided to pick Mr. Perfect, which everybody thought was a laugh for a moment. As primetime wrestling went on that night, Mr. Perfect was choking out Bobby Heenan, and he told him, I accept. And it was weird seeing Mr. Perfect as a fan favorite because you never – to me, right, right, he was right. always the perfect heel. So yeah. seeing him as a yeah. fan favorite was a little weird. And when he almost turned on Savage – that night and he walked out i'm like now that's perfect right there that's yeah. him yeah and i always and i thought maybe this okay this is a setup this is now a three on one mm-hmm. and he came back to the ring and he finished the match and then he wrestled through 1993 as a fan favorite he had a couple of good matches like Sluger, sean michaels let, now let's get into the sean michaels thing because remember that, that summer slam correct? yeah it was that, it yeah. was and he was going for the three p at that point Nobody yeah. ever had the IC title three times. And he was going for the three-peat. Um, I know they were pushing Sean, so mm-hmm. that's probably why Perfect didn't go over. But I really, really wanted him. If anybody deserved to get the three-peat, I felt like it was Perfect, man. Because when, oh, when you think about the Intercontinental title, he's probably, for me, he's the first one. He might be the first one to come to mind. He's one, definitely one of the first people, I think, of when you think of the IC title. and he be- I think... Definitely. I think of him, Razor, and Shawn Michaels. Yeah. and, and Oh, and, Bret Hart, too. Right, of course, yeah. yeah. But I'm just talking about pure intercontinental champions, guys that never went yeah. on to win the world. I think a perfect then he made it like the workman's belt, like with perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you could you could argue Macho Man too, and and Steamboat, even though Steamboat didn't really have it that long. Um, that was right? a shame, right? But that I mean, we'll get in, we could get into that in another story. Apparently, because of that, Steamboat wanted to take some time off, and then they punished him because he he was supposed to be the IC title. They needed him to do the house shows. He wanted time off, and it was going to hurt the. Uh, yeah, the, the draw at the box office. That's another story. But yeah. he perfect when perfect had that belt, it was like, okay, you knew when the IC title was on the line, it was gonna be a good match. Mm-hmm. You were gonna get you were gonna get your money's worth, you know. Uh, and he didn't get the three peat. No. Apparently, after that, um, his back starts to flare up again. He starts to have problems again. Yeah, because he went back to commentating. Right, right. And then he disappears for a while, right? Then he yeah. doesn't show up again till WrestleMania. <laughs> 94 he was the referee because yeah, he was gone for a while 
He was the yeah. special guest referee, and apparently they were supposed to that they were supposed to have a feud. Luger mm-hmm. and yeah. and Perfect were supposed to they were supposed to wrestle each other. They were supposed to go into a feud after that because he screwed him out of the belt. Mm-hmm. But, but supposedly he was having back problems again. But I mean, he's also getting paid by Lloyd's of London. Who, who knows what the, what the what the truth is? But that that was pretty much that was the end of him wrestling, really. Because he, yeah, he came back as a commentator later on. He had that little brief spat with Mark Merrill, actually with Triple H, and then Mark they, Merrill. Yeah, they and... they even they even tried to get him in the ring for that because when he right. when he turned on Merrill and Triple H wins the Intercontinental Title against yeah. him, that was supposed to be a feud that they yeah. did it in your house. But then shortly after that, he leaves again over money. Showed, yeah, but and it was over money. It went to WCW. Yeah, it was over a big money right. thing. They were going back and forth. he started pulling no shows. But apparently, the plan was. He was gonna be an active wrestler again in WWF. Yeah, you know. So as you said, he went on to WCW. But as far as his WWF career, um, what would you say would be the point where he should have gotten? The, do you think it was ninety that he should have gotten the title before he got the IC belt, or do you think after he made his IC title run, then he should have been pushed? You gotta know, actually say both. But if I had to pick one, right, I'd right. say that would be in the nineteen ninety. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would agree with you. I think that. Both would have been fine, but maybe 90 just because of the how they started him and where he was going. That yeah. was kind of the perfect time to give him. They they didn't do what, what, what to me is a normal way to push a wrestler. And they used to do it this way is you put you, they start out wrestling. Then you go for the intercontinental title. Right. Then eventually that's your ticket to go to the, to mm-hmm. the world heavyweight championship for him. They went straight to the top right. and he handled it. And it worked. And then for some way, and then again, whatever reason it was, it just, it fell, it fell off. He became one of the great intercontinental champions in 1993 on that second run. I couldn't see him facing Yokozuna. Now, if he stayed through 94 and wrestled, then maybe you have that match with Bret Hart again, maybe, but, but that would have interfered with a guy that we're going to talk about in the next episode, Owen Hart. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I think if he doesn't get hurt in ninety one, he gets the belt at some point. At some point, he gets the belt, whether it was ninety four, ninety five. I think at some point he, but I think it was a combination of the injuries, yeah, and and also the early on the whole Hogan, we're not putting a heel, whatever. But but even ninety one would have been hard because then they you know you remember you had Hogan still running with the belt you had yeah, but, Undertaker yeah but he didn't have I to mean, get the belt at that point that's my point if he would have stuck around and stayed healthy and stayed active I think him and Bret Hart would have been you know maybe going back I mean even ninety two think about it like after that, Flair got it um, you could have had him and Bret have a little thing or something I mean there was so many who knows Royal Rumble ninety three probably would have been the best place to uh, have, have him get the title match because r- rather than Razor Ramon, it could have been Mr. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I think would have been a better match. I mean, at that time, they're trying to they're, they're trying to feel out Scott Hall and see what he can do in the ring because, yeah. you know, he's only there two months now and he's already getting a, t- a title match, which, as you know, at, at the Royal Rumble, the title matches there aren't as – Grand, grand as they would be, let's say a SummerSlam, right. because most of your most of your top talent is in the Rumble fighting for a, for a position. But I believe him and Bret Hart at Royal Rumble '93 at Sacramento would have been great. Oh yeah, it would have been tremendous, tremendous. But wrong place, wrong time, as they say, right? You ain't kidding. So, Not these yeah, so, guys. Yeah. So uh, that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Um, the next episode, we're going to be getting into the '90s. So uh, let us know what you think, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see later on from us. And uh, like, comment, share, subscribe.